So hi, everybody. Welcome and thanks for joining us on another collective session. Uh, I'm really excited to have uh, on this session today uh, a range of, of folks. Uh, and we're here to talk about single guest profiles, the guest journey, and uh, how the guest interacts with their mobile device. This is a discussion that we've started based on a LinkedIn thread from Hauke, who's on this session with us. But before we get into the thread itself, let me introduce those that are on the call. We have Martin Bukalil representing Marriott International out of Hello. Hong Kong, Asia Pacific. Hey, Martin, thanks for joining us. Hi, Hi Andre. And Hello. we also have Tim, Tim Weiland, who's the uh, general manager at the Alpina Hotel Gestatt in Switzerland. Tim, lovely to have you with us. Good Thank morning. you for joining. Thank you, Andre. And of course, Richard Volter, who is the founder and uh, CEO of Muse. CEO, right? Or just no, founder? Just founder. Right? I just, just I just like to keep it clean. Um, yeah. Hi there. It's great to have you, Richard. Thanks for joining. And Hauke, of course, Hauke Lente, who is the Managing Director of Nomadics Asia Pacific and EMEA. Hauke, great to have you joining us as well. Thanks for being here. Hi, everybody. Thanks. So I think really the purpose, as I said uh, at the start, is to discuss the, the guest journey, their mobile device, and the single guest profile. And Hauke, you posted a thread on LinkedIn that uh, kind of over uh, a period of time garnered a interesting uh, range of comments and uh, feedback and I'd like to just perhaps start by really going into that and the initial thread that you started with was when considering the discussion about the lack of central guest profiles loyalty and knowing the guest how would the guest journey change if a mobile device can be securely linked to a central guest profile and I imagine that you identify and know the guest the moment they arrive on premise by their mobile, and then you start the action of servicing their, their needs. And you also mentioned you're super keen to hear uh, people's thoughts on this and obviously non-PII related if possible. So I, I don't think that will be a problem, but I'd, I'd like to start the conversation uh, really by um, perhaps the asking Martin from a global brand perspective from, from Marriott and with the recent announcement of Bonvoy and, and how Bonvoy is approaching this moving forward. Martin, could you perhaps elaborate for us on how Marriott is going or looking into this and what, if any, are the system challenges that you're facing or that Marriott faces through this profile or through this single guest profile challenge and how, well, I did say we we're going to stay away from the privacy side of it, but it is, a, it is an important, I guess, element. So I guess, first of all, answer the question, how are you dealing with that from the single guest profile, um, working that across your brands? across systems that Marriott has, because there's a number of different systems that you're working with. What, what approach is Marriott taking on this? I think the answer is as big as the long question you just put out there, Andre. Um, look, the reality is there's no single box that we go to with all of the data in it yet. It's gonna take us some time to get there, um, but we do have some tools. Obviously, the Bonvoy app, as you mentioned, is a place where guests do use that to uh, gain access to our hotels, the facilities, the mobile key, and store their information when they load it in there. So we're still collecting information. And within that framework, uh, when we collect that uh, in that central database, if you like, uh, we have to get a guest to agree to provide that information. And we have to store that information accurately and completely, which is a challenge when you've got so many guests coming from so many places across so many properties. And then the other difficulty we have, of course, is our PMS systems. Not all of our PMSs are one system. We've got a central res that's one system, but the PMSs in, in Asia, for example, you know, 95% of it is on property. We're just starting that move right now to go to a cloud-based solution uh, wow. with our Oracle product. So uh, that's tricky as well. And in North America, we have some above property central systems. So I think we're a work in progress, but it's a very big priority for us. And really where I think Utopia is for us in the end is to get all of that into one synchronized place to meet um, whatever consent arrangements apply in each country level and privacy requirements are there. And then have a situation where a guest comes to our property and you know, he doesn't have to repeat anything we know. 
And not only do we know, we understand because knowing and recording is one thing, but understanding clearly what exactly uh, that guest wants is, is a very particular matter. So we need to be concise. Um, and we also, as I said, we need a guest to tell us and agree for us to store that kind of information. So, you know, it is a bit of a balancing act uh, to get to that utopia of providing the best possible service for our guests. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Martin. I'll come back to you on the, the PMS challenge a little bit later because I saw Richard sure. nodding his head in, in in big agreement there. So I'd like to come back to that piece. But before we do, I'd like to also now move to Tim and ask Tim for his perspective from a, a smaller standalone luxury property. Is this how, how, how are you prioritizing this uh, for, for your hotel, for your guests, given the, the reputation that the property has? What, from a, a technology perspective, are you uh, looking at or treating as as the, um, I guess, the the main priority for for handling this situation? Yeah, I think definitely our position is different. Guest loyalty programs and loyalty cards aren't something that we take into consideration at all. I think at our level, guests are expecting to be known as an individual and be recognised as a as a person. And that's really where the challenge lies because that needs to be in a way hidden and automatic. So we don't want to ask guests for a membership number or, or that they put a card in front of us. They want to be recognized if they've been coming to the property every, every third weekend. They want to be recognized as an individual, no matter if it's at the check-in process or at the spa or at the restaurant in the evenings for their various table reservations. And then what we've noticed a lot with the current COVID situation, I'm not quite sure how it was in other destinations, but we were allowed to be open and our restaurants were allowed to be open for quite a while, even to the public, afterwards only to hotel guests. But then there's so many different systems which the guests had to use themselves again. So when they had to scan a QR code when they enter the restaurant and scan another QR code when they leave the restaurant so that you have that tracking, there's so much information there but that's not the same information that we have in the PMS. It's not the same information that we have in our, in our spa booker software. It's not the same information, again, in our table restaurant software. So when, when I saw this thread as well, I thought, hey, yeah, there is a lot of opportunities here. And we have so many different systems already. And these systems are not talking to each other. And we have so many different profiles. And each profile has different information. And it, there's no overlap. So, I mean, that's, that's where we're struggling as well. We have the simplest of things now, the communication on a daily basis with the guests. I would say that on average, I have at least 10, 15, 20 WhatsApp communications on my private mobile with guests. It's the same with my reservation manager, the same with my front office manager, the same with my head concierge, the same with, my, um, <laughs> with the maître d'hôtel. All of that is also information about the guest, which may just disappear the day that person leaves. So we've tried putting in systems there as well. We now have through a platform a central communications WhatsApp means, but I think the weakest point is always the human aspect. The weakest point is always the how are people using it and isn't it much easier to use my private WhatsApp than to use the company one again. And I'm and I as an individual, I'm not talking about myself now, but from, uh, from certain department heads, don't they keep a certain priority and a certain privilege within their roles when they have that private contact with a client? That's where I see a huge, huge challenge. And how can we avoid that? How can we force that centralization? How much um, focus are you putting in communicating to your guests via their mobile device? If other than WhatsApp, are you looking at other ways of engaging with the guest through their device? Is that... Uh, or, we, we, or, or as a luxury brand, are you more concerned, concerned about that human-to-human -human aspect? I think one doesn't exclude the other. One thing which we did not want to do is things like chatbots. If yeah. there is the WhatsApp communication, then it is between Benjamin the concierge, and people know that they are chatting with Benjamin the concierge. They're not chatting with an automated response system. If they're chatting with me, they're chatting with me. So, so that is very, very important for us but it can be over an electronic means. I mean, people nowadays are chatting with their kids and with their wives over, over electronic means. So I don't think that you're excluding the human aspect by 
using that channel of technology. Yeah. And we, we are using it more and more, yes. Uh, and I think a lot of people prefer it as well to be contacted by the hotel as opposed to getting a phone call or as opposed to them having to run to the reception to get information, that we can be proactive by pushing communication from our side without it being advertising, without it being in any way things that they don't want, without invading yeah. that privacy sphere. It's a, do, you, do you find that's a fine line or do you feel that that's something that's easy to manage? There again, it's, it's the human aspect, which is the weakest link. It, it's, if it's a standard message to someone who's arrived at 11 o'clock and the room's not ready and you say, yeah, well, please scan this QR code, then you'll have a direct link with a hotel and we can message you at any time. So they are initiating the conversation. So that way we are then allowed to communicate with them. And then if we, if we have a procedure which says, as soon as the room is ready, send the guest a message which says, your room is ready, please come to the front desk to collect your key. Mm -hmm. or hopefully, as Martin mentioned, at some point, the electronic keys as well, where we're not yet at. But I think that is very easy. But as soon as you're saying, how can we upsell? How can we push a promotion? There, I think it becomes very, very delicate as to when does it become intrusive? Mm. When do you lose that personal aspect, which is what people are really looking for in our type of property? Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, Tim. Uh, how can, from a service provider's perspective, how how's Nomadics approaching this? I mean, obviously, you started this conversation, this thread. So, what was it from your perspective that that was the main driver on this, other than wanting to get people's feedbacks? Is there uh, is, is this something that Nomadics is wanting to drive uh, in the future, or what, what what was the thought behind it? The, the, the thought behind the, the thought process behind it was basically that I uh, that I basically find that there are two worlds. One is the networking world, and one is the the PMS loyalty um, profile guest profile world. And 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 there is a technology on the market which can actually combine these two worlds. So um, and I don't want to, which which is not it's a nomadics technology, but it's also a, a standard technology, um, uh, which is called Passpoint, so which has nothing to do with nomadics on, on that angle. But um, what, staying with the example, I think, you know, coming back to Tim, and I understand that's a very personal guest approach where you are, and, and where you're trying to, to communicate with your guests on multiple levels on, on, on personal interaction and I think that technology could really allow you to get a notification on your mobile device when the guest is arriving and you could actually proactively send out a WhatsApp, a WhatsApp message to that guest so that that was just a thought when you were talking about WhatsApp and, and talking with Benjamin but Benjamin still doesn't know when the guest is arriving and um, um, is still relatively disconnected from the guest so I think that's just one angle of it um, of course there's a lot of other information but I totally agree with you that that the key is really to to walk that fine line between overdoing it and and not end up with something which many years ago for example access point providers have called uh, location-based marketing that's what i don't want I, I also don't want that you know i would never walk walk down a shopping mall and then receiving every five meters a, a promotional campaign that's not uh, but, but, you know, when we look at the world of guest journey and all these multiple products which are popping up like mushrooms in the last five, six years and which are doing great things and every, everything is built around the guest and, and then hoteliers usually go out and then and they're saying, um, okay, I want, the, I want the digital guest journey. But then you look into the PMS and then the PMS, how could it exist 10 times? So, you know, where do you start building that guest journey then? And, and so the, the challenge is really not, I think, you know, the surrounding guest journey world. We can do a lot of things. And, and I think the Wi-Fi technology is completely under, it's not even considered, to be honest, as, as part of the guest journey. And that's where it already starts. But if we looked at the guest journey, there are a lot of variety, a lot of different products we can buy, which, which are doing good things. But it, also, it always ends up. With, with the data you, you keep in the core system, which, which for most hotels is the, is the PMS. And, um, and if that's not clean, then, then you know, how, where do you start? And I think that's the biggest challenge. And I think actually, if you look at global brands versus single individual hotels, 
it's actually very positive for the single individual hotels because they can adapt that technology much faster and move 10 times or a thousand times faster than any of the large brands. And, and um, I think, Martin, you're part of this was also, I think, was, was publicly at least on LinkedIn, the integration between Marriott and Starwood. And, and these two system landscapes, just look at this and, and from that perspective. So I don't want to talk about the time frame, but it's sure not happening overnight. And versus, for example, for Tim, um, it might probably be much easier to adapt these services to, to what the guests today and even more are to, uh, expecting more and more, right? and especially if we look at international travelers from, from overseas. Yeah, I okay, great. I'm not sure if I answered your question. I went a little bit too far there. No, 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 that was great. Thank you, Hauke. I think I'd like to come to Richard now before I throw back to Martin and Tim to comment, but I'd like to uh, get Richard's perspective because um, Richard made uh, quite a few comments as well in that thread. And I always appreciate his uh, direct input and he's never shy of um, giving his opinion on certain topics. So Richard, you've heard now from Martin, from Tim, and now also Hauke, what's your What's your thoughts on that? And, and as a PMS prov provider that is one of these more forward-thinking, cloud-based, uh, very adaptive, open-based solutions, what's, what's, your, what's your thoughts? Well, I think that um, uh, the, the thing about PMSs and the thing that we didn't actually realize when we started building it um, was that there is a, an original sin contained within PMSs and this ends up actually kind of translating across the entire landscape. So without getting too boring and technical about it, the biggest problem basically with the PMS is that it's always, and this is this is basically from, you know, all the kind of old dinosaurs that are out there basically to the ones that are, that are trying to update their tech stack, but even to the newest ones basically that you actually have on the market. The problem that everyone keeps repeating is thinking that the room inventory is somehow the most important thing. Um, and we at News, like we never started off with our architecture. We basically just said, no, the guest is at the middle. You know, you're selling a service to the guest. You're not selling a room to a room, you know? So nothing goes to the room in our system. Everything either goes to a guest or to a company. And that in itself, it doesn't really seem like a, like a big thing, but we've always uh, maintained that that's one of our biggest structural advantages over every other player out there because if you think about it from the point of view that you're just selling inventory and you're putting every single thing to the to the room you know like we always say that you know the 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 moments of the greatest value in a hotel happen in the lobby and nobody actually ascribes any value to that whatsoever the, the only value is stored within the rooms and you know to to me that that's that's one of the biggest reasons why hotels have this kind of uh, have have two aspects basically. I think on the one side, they end up over indexing for the room revenue, and then the the second part is that they really really end up um, uh, then thinking that every single guest, because it's the way that they es essentially end up viewing the guest, they think that every single new guest is a new guest. Uh, you know, but there might be you know that might be a family member of an older guest that came in that might be a um uh you know a direct link basically that might be the same guest that's coming in but now they basically have you know a different um uh different phone number it might be a woman basically who has a different name because she suddenly got married and you know and i think that the point about the guest profiles as well is that you know i think it was a great discussion and i think that one of the things that the hospitality industry does incredibly well is we think deeply and very, very well. And actually, I'd say in a much more advanced way than almost any other industry about privacy. And we think about, you know, what does the guest want to know from us? And what do we need to know about the guest in order to actually and but there you see this kind of it's a fair exchange. You know, you you should get to a fair exchange. If I get more information from you, I'm able to actually provide you with more uh, with more service. So I think if you think about the guest profiles, the guest should have a um, uh, a way for themselves to actually kind of update their profiles, update all of the different things that they're actually wanting to do at the at the hotel. 
And then that should really feed down through every single system. It shouldn't just be your kind of CRS and your guest management system, but your PMS ultimately, I think, should actually have the same representation of this, uh, of this information. And it needs to basically have that on the profile level. It can't just have that basically, you know, it, it can't have it on a bill uh, that's, uh, that's outside to a room, basically. Uh, you need to be able to actually uh, be able to say, you know, this person today has had these services. Before, when they came and stayed with me, they had these services. And I'm able to now look at that, basically, and see that there's some kind of pattern. You know, and if there's, if there's a pattern in the services that I'm actually kind of offering, then I can take that and go, okay, great. This is anticipating the next move. You know, and, and to be able to do that across a chain, across even a large, uh, large independent property is always going to be really, really difficult to do that. Um, and I think that, you know, the, the technology has to be able to help. It can't hinder that. And I feel like the, the stack that has built up in hotels over the last 20 or 30 years actually hinders that guest experience rather than helping it. The, so stack and the, the stack and the commercials, Richard, from some of these other players, in my and, opinion, and because... It's an upgrade, right? Like, to clean up the profiles is an upgrade. Yeah, yeah I mean, quite frankly, you know, a lot of innovation, in my opinion, in, in, in the last couple of years was blocked, and especially in this regard, journey profile is, is blocked because as a small player, you can't necessarily play with the big players unless, unless you put a lot of money on the table, so... Let's be very clear with that. And that's blocking the small players and that's blocking the hotels from innovation. But you know, Richard, what you're saying is is, is very, very true. And I, I, I only can only agree with it. I think it's it's an industry problem in in general, and it happens through all the channels. I mean, if it's a if it's a booking.com reservation, which we'll occasionally get, we might have a family name, but we have nothing else very often. Nothing else. And when the guest suddenly stands in front of us, we're like, you've been here before, right? Because we know them as a person. But in terms of profile, absolutely nothing. But then even through some of the larger travel agents or the consortia, sometimes we'll get an email from, from I don't know if I should be throwing names around, but even just American Express Platinum Travel saying, yeah, we have a top VIP client coming. Like, fantastic. What information can you give me about him so that we make his stay even, even better? Like, Oh, he's just a big spender with us. <laughs> but we know nothing about him. That doesn't help. Him. Yeah, like how much? Like <laughs> I don't know. He's just he's in that segment. Yeah, he's a platinum. That's it. But that doesn't help us in any way to personalize the stay. And that I think, as you say, is, is an ongoing industry problem. They've booked a room, they've booked a service from that date arrival, that day departure to that price. That's it. And how do we turn that I, around? I, that, I think, is the question I, Alfred really, really I was think, asking initially. I, I think we've gone through, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I think we've gone through a couple of phases here. Like if you went back 10 years and we didn't have mobile devices um, so prevalent as one thing, and we had this PMS on property, um, we relied on the profile that was in the PMS in its standalone way, and it really didn't didn't do what we wanted because the PMS is really performing a transaction-based operation on property. Check in, check out, um, change information. It's a very basic concept. And yes, it's the heart of the business when it comes to the on-property operation. But if you describe the PMS as an enterprise solution, it's not. And I think that that, that was has happened with us as we recognise that and we've said, okay, we need an associate-facing uh, piece. And we ended up, as I mentioned earlier, going outside and getting another product to do that. And then we happened to have our Bonvoy app on the guest-facing side. So now we end up having this synchronization of these three things together because they're all sitting in different places on, on that scale. And the collectiveness of that together gives us hopefully, you know, a directional move to, to where we really want to be. I think really where we want to be in the end, as if you can predict the obvious, is on that mobile app that the guest is carrying, 
that as much information he's willing to share is stored there. And on the property, we have all of that and we have it before he arrives. And uh, to your point uh, uh, earlier, uh, Tim, about the uh, travel agent not having the data, somehow being able to find a way uh, without numberizing guests, as you also mentioned before, but a way to have a, a central uh, system outside of even our company to recognize pe people for who they are so we can easily match them up and, and not miss very important guests who turn up and we then realize that, oh, you're the Mr. Brown that stayed with us a hundred times. So it's gradually being solved, but it would have been nice to solve it, you know, when PMSs came out. But unfortunately what's happened is mobile came after and then, um, you know, we went off on, at least we went off on a track with a, a third party system for that enterprise collection because we don't have all of that PMS data available above property. It's really seen as a property based um, centre. It's a very good point, Martin, you make. I think it would be um, very, very helpful if there was something like a central repository, an independent, neutral, almost central repository where um otas hotels anyone can essentially go in um and and get the data they need on guests profiles or, or individuals profiles and richard back to your point giving the autonomy back to the guests where they can then go in and update the information that they're willing to share and that they would like people to know about them what their travel preferences are what their room preferences are um i think at the end of the day perhaps really at the crux of it that's what's really missing what, what, what yeah. do you think, Richard? Like, I uh, I echo that. Like, I, I think just to go back to Martin's point, I feel like um, there, like, when we started, there was so much that we heard about, from people about what the PMS should do. I For me, like, the, the reason that, like, I hate the three-letter acronyms within, within hospitality because they're essentially meaningless. Like, a CRS is basically the same as a PMS, or it should be. You know, like there's no real difference in the two. The difference is, is that PMS has the ability to affect behavior on site, you know, and that's the way that we look at it is basically it's a behavioral engine. It's something that basically is needs to be real time, uh, needs to have every single thing connected because there is something that will, might happen in some of the other systems um, and the person on the ground needs to have that information straight away and needs to have it in a systematized way so they can react to it. And that's basically what the PMS should be. It should be basically that kind of rapid response uh, system. And whether, you know, and, and to a certain point, we don't even think that at the end of it, there should be a screen with a system called PMS because this type of delivery is actually best if it's completely screenless. You know, so if you, because the the one currency that we have within hotels is actually the, the the moment of eye contact and if you're able to actually kind of have that moment of eye contact and you're not giving it away basically by looking at a screen you're kind of not trading that currency away from the person to a to a lifeless screen basically that you have behind a desk and you're there like a shopkeeper basically with with the barrier in front of you as, as long as you have those types of moments, basically, you will not be able to give the, the guest the great guest experience that they deserve, basically. And that you can only do if you show them that you're actually paying attention to them. So from that perspective, it's a, it's a, diff uh, it's a difficult, let's say, almost um, um, neurological problem uh, and a behavioral problem, rather than basically saying that this is what the PMS should do. The PMS basically should be there to assist the uh, the staff that are on property that are actually performing a really, really important function. And it should basically kind of um, make sure that it's open enough to actually utilize all the strands and, uh, and strings actually kind of coming in. But I think to your point about the, um, uh, the, the preferences, I think we do actually have a number of systems and a number of, let's say, identity wallets uh, that exist today. So for example, you look at Apple, you look at, um, you know, where, uh, for example, WhatsApp was a great example. You know, I think that ultimately it's where the guest wants to be and who they trust, you know? And I think that the, a lot of the time in this industry as well, I keep hearing people talking about, you know, well, this is our data or this is our data. And it's just like, think about what it means. 
it's not your data. It's a customer that has given you some data for a specific service. If you need to perform that service with a third party, or if you need to make sure that you're actually kind of, you know, looking at it from a long-term perspective, which is to say that a happy guest uh, also means a connected data guest, basically. That's what the guest ultimately kind of wants. Then you should be able to kind of break out of your siloed approach and just to say, no, 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 this is our data. With, and, and everyone does it, you know, from the OTAs. Look at how Booking.com and Expedia hide their um, uh, hide uh, the emails. And it's to the detriment of the service that Booking.com and Expedia can actually do. Because if you think about them, you know, they're just basically a performance marketing engine because they they end at the time of the transaction and they can't ever kind of break out of that. Basically, it's the same thing with you know uh, the the hotel loyalty schemes as well. It's the same thing with Amex. It's the same thing with all of these different things. You should be able to actually um, think about sharing that data in the way that the customer ultimately wants. So if the customer basically wants to you know make sure that they're um, their data is shared in a way that enables them to have a great experience, they should have the power to do that. And I think that that, that really is the, the kind of the crux of, again, the, there, there are certain things in this industry that I think limit ourselves in, in our thinking of how to actually kind of do the job that we're here to do, which is to serve the guests. And a lot of the time we basically just put ourselves beneath the veneer of, no, 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 this is how things should be because this is how they've been, or this is how they've been built, or this is the way that, you know, the three letter acronym, this is what that that stands for. Um, and I think that that, you know, as technology partners, we can't think of that because our ultimate aim is to solve the actual problem. Um, and I think as hoteliers, I think they should be much more demanding of their partners and of their uh, tech partners as well, basically, to say, no, 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 I need to solve the actual problem. I shouldn't care about your internal politics and your internal kind of business models that you actually have uh, in order to be able to do that. So how do we solve the problem? I, I mean, that's essentially that's a million dollar question, right? I mean, we, 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 we have a lot of these conversations. There's, there's, and especially since COVID online, you can you, you literally jump in any online session and hear a very similar type of conversation. But how do we so, solve the problem? So I think, I think maybe one, you know, at the end of the day, first of all, the limitations are what is the guest willing to share with you about them is one. Two is the regulatory um, aspects. What can we store about those guests? And then three, I think, is really the, maybe the, the somewhat of the end state answer is based on the first two, using an AI tool or something above that looks, that can collect and augment that data and pull in a single source of truth and then augment that to the PMS on property. So when the guest does arrive, um, everything is known and the service can be delivered. Harker, what do you think? Yeah, it makes totally sense for me, but I'm always thinking about the guest still has to identify himself and either download your app or say, hey, I'm the guest. Or go to but a I think kiosk. If we, come, you know. if, we, if we give the guests the opportunity to nominate, if we give them the autonomy to say, yes, I'm prepared to let the hotel know that I'm arriving or that I'm five minutes away, um, I think you'll find nine times out of ten, most people would be okay with that. Absolutely. Um, and, and, so I think, I think again, I, I come back to this, this point that, again, Richard, you said earlier, if we gave the opportunity to the guest to be able to say, yes, I, I want, I'm happy to, to, to give this information from me away, and that piece is missing at the moment, I think. Or am I wrong? Martin, is it possible in Bonvoy for guests to say, yeah, by all means, you guys can know all about me uh, in advance, or I'm only yeah. willing to give you this, this much information? I mean, we, first of all, we need to, we, we have consent-related policy that ties back to their nationality, their country of origin, and other government criteria. So they will be get presented with, you know, three boxes to tick or whatever it may be to say, are you okay if we do this? Are you okay if we do that? And if they're not okay, then we can't do it. 
uh, or they may say, yeah, I'm okay, and then guess what? A year later, we've got to go and ask the same question again because of the regulatory. So, I mean, it, it, and that's actually getting harder and tougher. So, you know, this is a quite a large mountain to climb, and I think everybody has a desire, but it is a mammoth undertaking to be in a position to have anybody walk in your door and know all about them as they come through the door. I mean, yeah. that that's really what we're what we're hoping yeah. for. And I think we can just make incremental steps uh, because it is such a mammoth thing and we're, we've got these setbacks. Mm. But I know that the topic is mainly about the unique profile via mobile phone, but maybe we shouldn't get caught up only by that mobile phone idea as well. I mean, very often I still have guests calling the hotel, not necessarily from a mobile, but from, from their fixed line phone. What we've tried to do is we every phone number we know of the guest, we program it into the phone system so that we know if Mr. So-and-so is calling, uh, you know, we see the name straight away. We don't need to ask that name again. Unfortunately, we don't have an interface then again between the PMS or between the restaurant reservation system. But at least we can type that name in straight away and see, ah, okay, well, he, he's been there. He's been coming the last five five weeks every weekend. And his next booking is for the coming weekend. So we can already anticipate. What about facial recognition? I think there's a lot happening there. And maybe yeah, the same thing a... here. You know, if, if the guest is walking down to the spa, maybe they've left their phone in their room because they're going to go for a swim. But imagine that, that additional plus if a very discreet camera somewhere near the spa entrance could just have a pop-up for the receptionist to say, ah, oh, that's Mr. Weiland arriving at the spa. Hello, how are you? You've only and, just and checked that would be great. can I show you around? Uh, that would be great. But again, it's, there's these setbacks. So first of all, you've got an infrastructure cost to set up that camera capability. And then again, unfortunately, you run into the overriding factor of privacy and government regulation that won't allow us to do those things. So yeah, that all sounds really sweet. Love to have a position <laughs> where you could automatically but know who it is just by facial recognition. But even but if we I, wanted to, we've got the setbacks. But, if but that, that's what, doing... sorry, that, that was my earlier point that actually we could know who the guest is by identifying the mobile device. Now, I agree the mobile device is not necessarily with you when you walk into the spa. Having said that, I believe it's probably with 80% of the guests and, and they're even using the mobile phone on other instances um, where you wouldn't expect it. So, um, you know, knowing the guest by mobile phone I think is, is a, and, and that's a solution which is out there, which is existing and which the hospitality has until not to, until today not adapted and is partially not even aware about. And that was my originally thinking when I stumbled across that technology to say, hey, actually, if you did that, you know, of course, we're looking all for the ideal dreaming solution with face recognition and everything. But having said that, there is a solution out there which, which can be used and implemented today and which allows me to, if the big spender from American Express comes, at least to create that experience to recognize him by mobile phone, not mobile phone number, Tim, when they're calling, but by the moment he connects to the Wi-Fi network. Mm -hmm. So we identify him by his device, which is in his pocket, and, and then create that experience and, and basically serve him as a digital concierge. And that I mean, can this be is a very, you know. Yeah. Yeah, this is lovely. And I'll just throw in one more thought, though, is not every home. You're on mute, Martin. You've hit mute. Sorry. Apologies. All right. uh, this no is problem. a lovely thought. And, uh, yeah, if you're a busy big hotel with a large uh, income, maybe something you could do. But, you know, the reality is, is the tourism business is moving heavily into that limited service kind of model. And then the cost basis are lower. And uh, yeah, we'd love to recognize every guest, but delivering the technology and the support behind it and the staff and the recognition uh, al along the whole journey would be a struggle uh, in many factors, the financial and the staffing and the planning, you know, you can't effectively afford to provide the tools and resources um, to execute. That's yeah. with all respect from my perspective, dependent on the technology stack you're using. Now, in the case of Marriott, I, I fully agree with you. In the case of a more modern event-driven system, which would allow communication between systems, 
this could pretty much be 100% automated with somebody owning it, of course, internally, but I would not assume that you have to hire staff to, 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 to do that. I think it's actually that you would drive digital engagement and automate it, and, uh, and you could do that in a very discreet and, and really cool way. Um, but I agree it's depending what, what you know, hard, what core system you're using. Yeah. Yeah, worth like looking, I think yeah. The, yeah, like I, I think that the, I totally agree. Like, I think that, uh, you know, I'm happy that everyone's moving not only to kind of open systems, um, because I think that's, that's the kind of precursor to it, uh, but also they're kind of moving towards, you know, the ability for two way uh, functionality and communication the entire time, that event driven, um, you know, way of, of communication when you have webhooks, you know, when you can actually kind of pull information or, or uh, update changes of state, basically, in all the different systems. But I think that the like the, the, the way that I look at it is that, you know, I think the, the, the main takeaway from this discussion is that uh, for, for me is just, you know, I, I think that there is a fairly good roadmap on how this is going to kind of work. And I think if we all agree in the presets that basically you know, no, no information should be siloed, no information should be basically um, kept in, you know, the, I, I guess, basically the, the data silo, and then, you know, anonymized for everyone else, basically, I, I think we'll, we'll see that it takes a village to be able to serve a guest. I think if we start out with those kind of presets, if we understand the fact that we're looking at, you know, trying to get towards single guest profiles, the technology journey is going to be really, really long. Like I, I'm actually not a huge fan of facial recognition. I think you can solve it from a much better, it's a little bit harder to do, but if you don't need to store the actual kind of points on the face, you can basically still look at other aspects. People walk differently. People have different uh, gates. You can, you can do a lot of those things that don't seem as sensitive, for example, as uh, as somebody's face is to their to their kind of core identity, and I feel like that's almost the last thing that a lot of people want to or want to actually kind of share, you know. And without getting into the politics of it and, and things like that, but you know, I, I think that it's a it's a difficult thing for a lot of people, basically, in in this day and age, to just want to kind of hand over. Um, same thing with the with the mobile devices. I, I actually I was thinking with the. Um, with the phone, you know, I would, I would still probably have this when I actually go to the spa. So I think there is a way, um, you know, to uh, to keep the guest updated. But again, it has to be around that idea of consent. And if the consent is there, if you if the guest can basically see that there is a fair exchange, you know, my data for some value, then I think that that that's kept in line. Um, but I think you know, like we see it, like you know, this is this is a five year journey for us. You know, this is not something that we're going to be able to solve in a really, really short time. But but I think the one thing that we have to have across the industry is more and more consensus about the way that this should kind of come around and come about. And I think the more consensus that we're actually able to build, the better it will be. And it, the, the better it will be for the, for the systems as well, basically, and the system providers. Um, because then, you know, from a technology point of view, you know, having to cater, for example, to every single um, person's whim or every single um, kind of thing where, where we get asked to do this kind of specialist function because one property or one chain has this specific insight. You know, I, I think that that's, that's where the power of the, the, the different technology stacks actually kind of uh, come. I think it's, it's getting so much easier for, uh, for anyone, even, you know, of, of Tim's size, to actually build their own kind of, let's say, front-end stack, whether that's, you know, thinking about websites and thinking about, you know, something like Squarespace, you no longer need to get, you know, a huge, um, a huge spend there, or even thinking about applications and thinking about technologies like Webflow, um, which are basically kind of no-code applications that uh, let you create, you know, what could be at the end, for example, your own PMS or whatever it is, basically. Um, but it has to really start with some of these precepts that we all agree to as an industry. Um, and I think from there, we can actually build something really, really, truly, truly magical. And I, I think also from this perspective, as I think some of the some of the perspectives that the, the hotel industry or the hospitality industry has are actually some of the most forward facing. You know, I, I, you won't find a conversation like this about uh, privacy in retail. 
you know, you won't find this kind of uh, conversation in in other walks of life. And I think that sometimes we have to actually just take a step back and say, like, look, it's actually great that we we start out as an industry from the right precepts. Now let's actually kind of work towards them. Um, and let's make sure that we can actually kind of really fulfill that promise uh, as an industry together. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with anything you said, Richard. Um, and we are coming to the end of our, our session, but I'd like to just pull one uh, comment before we finalize everything today. I'd like to pull one comment out from the thread on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, and it comes from Tanya Pratt, who's with Oracle Hospitality. And it's, it's an interesting comment because it's one I often see and read um, that comes from, funnily enough, service providers. Um, I, I don't know if there's a, if that's a coincidence or, or what, but it's a very good point and it kind of comes back to what we're talking about as well. And she says that there's a fine line between personalizing guest experience and being too intrusive. Um, and that a lot of, for, for a lot of travelers, the hotel is a sanctuary away, uh, away from home. Obviously being recognized is important, but too much does get overwhelming. And I think it comes back again to giving that autonomy to the the guest saying, I'm willing for you to know that much about me and for, for you to get in touch with me when this and this occurs or for this particular reason. And she makes a good point. Otherwise, if there's too, if there's too much interaction, it can then often become too scripted and it feels too sterile in that sense. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, we're not going to solve this issue overnight and it's a, it is an issue we, we recognize as an industry overall. Um, but I think you know, having these conversations only helps uh, for, for everyone. And I think it's always good to have dialogue and especially to hear the perspective from, you know, from where Martin's sitting from his perspective. It's it's a massive undertaking. I mean, Martin, you said still 95% of the hotels are uh, um, oper um, uh, a property-based PMS systems. Um, just consider that now. I mean, the number of hotels you have in Asia is well into the hundreds. And just imagine now moving all those properties above prop uh, those hotels to an above property solution. That's yeah. a massive undertaking. We have eight, 800 and we've, we've just started doing it and we'll be finished by middle of next year, except yeah. for some of the outer lying countries. Yeah. And again, Richard, I don't know if you remember when we first had our, our very first interview, one of the things I asked you was how do properties or, or brands like Marriott, if they wanted to move into the cloud, how do they do that in a way that's as, as frictionless as possible? And it's it's a very, very hard thing to achieve. Yeah. Like I like that that's the thing. I think it, it comes to um, you know, the 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 fact that it's it's a massive undertaking. And and actually to that to that point about the comment, you know, I think that you know, when you are in a brand and you do have brand standards. It is actually kind of incumbent on you to to be able to train your staff that it isn't scripted. You know, it's like it's essentially you're employing actors. You know, these people should be well trained enough to be able to recognize essentially what those kind of algorithms for good good guest experience should be. You know, if this then that basically. If you recognize a guest and he's basically doing this, and that's where the training should really come in. You know, yeah. and so if you do want to kind of have that level of service that's essentially the brand promise is it basically to say like look we we will we will do it in a way that we can train a lot of these people up basically to make sure that it doesn't feel stilted and it doesn't feel scripted you know and mm -hmm. these people will actually be and you know then it gets into a huge kind of thing like um into the fact that you know i i think that actually ultimately you should be the receptionist or the host should actually be the highest paid person in the entire hotel and should be basically the highest paid person in in hospitality um that's not the case because i think we we look at it from this point of view of you know how can we train up a student who's only going to be with us for three weeks um you know to for them to be able to uh you know uh make sure that they're delivering service of a quality that doesn't feel stilted um but I think if you if you get the right type of technology, you know, I, I think you can basically automate all the things that, you know, something like revenue management. I'm not saying that, like, it's completely going to die, but the machines are going to be better, you know. And so that disparity between the things that you actually kind of value, um, the, the, I think that will also kind of change as we as yeah. we move. 
All right, brilliant. Well, listen, before we wrap up, I'd like to ask each of you for closing thoughts. Tim, let's start with you. Uh, based on, on the conversation, how do you uh, feel now after that? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. I think I'm, I'm very privileged to be part of this conversation. I think it's very, very interesting. I've always considered technology to be a a, a lovely addition, but like Richard was mentioning, I think the most important thing is that human aspect. I think that training aspect, the fact that, like I mentioned earlier, that the human is still often the weakest link. Sure, we're always complaining about our systems not being interfaced or something like that, but in the end, it's that human touch and that human interaction which makes the difference. But if we can give more focus on that human interaction, but taking away some of these little details, then we're all winners. The guest is a winner. The, the, the team behind the computer is a winner because they spend less time staring at that screen, as Hark was mentioning. And we have more of that personalization. That's, that's really what I want to push. And if we can somehow build that at some point with this, as you mentioned, Apple wallet kind of voluntary information giving, then I take it as a traveler and I definitely take it as, an, as a hotelier. Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Tim. And thanks for being here. We do appreciate it. Uh, Martin, closing thoughts from yourself? Uh, I'm upbeat. It's a journey and we're making progress. That's good. But you're always upbeat, so that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Halka, how about yourself? <clears throat> yeah, I think we should, um, you know, you know, somebody I know, he, he's always using the sentence, we need to crawl before we walk, before we run. And 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 I think we're pretty much at the crawling stage now, and, and we should not aim, as we did so many times in the past, to immediately look at this ideal solution and, and start dreaming and completely overdoing it, and then it doesn't work. So I think we can, we can review what we have on our plate, which is good centralized cloud-based systems, right? We have them, these are available. We have data cleansing tools. We have merge and purge tools. It's all there to, to, to build that central profile. Maybe not in the scale of, of, of the Marriott brand, but certainly if, if you know for the individual or smaller brands. And, and then considering Wi-Fi into this. And then it's actually, I think we're actually, you know, we can make a massive step forward without having the ideal solution of con putting my consent and deciding what data I want to provide to you as a hotelier. Um, because I assume, quite frankly, until that happens on a global scale, this is very much a dream for, for the time being. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Richard? Yeah, no, I, uh, I uh, thank you so much, everyone, for the, uh, uh, for, for the debate. I uh, really enjoyed it. I think the the other the the thing that I'd probably like to leave with is you know I, I think we all have to be pragmatic. Uh, you know there is no ideal solution, and anyone who basically says that they have the answer is lying. Um, but I think that if you start out with the right first principles and precepts, and if you start out with the right kind of mindset, like I think Tim was Tim was saying, and I fully fully agree with it. If you basically start out with the mindset of you know, this is the type of uh, service that I would like to actually kind of, um, you know, have, and this is the, the the type of product that I'm actually kind of creating uh, for my for my guests. Then I think everything else will or should actually kind of fall in line to that. Because at the end of the day, you know, if if we don't have that, and that isn't something that's basically kind of geared towards the guest experience then none of us as technology vendors basically will, will actually kind of sell sell anything. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I think it has to be pragmatic that not everything's going to actually work today. Uh, but I think we're all on a good path uh, towards that. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you all again very much. And and to you, the listener, and for, for watching, we really appreciate you taking the time. We hope you found this uh, insightful, helpful, beneficial. If you're making the decision about how you can best uh, approach this topic, then uh, please you know, feel free to reach out to myself or if you'd like to speak with anyone on the session or reach out to them directly via LinkedIn. I'm sure they'd be happy to uh, also speak with you and, and to uh, address it uh, privately. Um, gentlemen, thank you once again. Really, really appreciate your time. I know you're all very busy, so uh, it's great that you took this time. And uh, until next time, it's, uh, it's bye for now. Thank you.